Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to be going over my top five tips that I think every single Recon player needs to know. Now, my goal behind this video is to give you a better understanding of the champion as well as to make you a better League of Legends player as a whole. Now, I put timestamps at every single point in the video. There is going to be one at the top of the page as well as when you scroll down uh, below the video, it is going to be segmented into the different tips. So I am a bit limited with this format, only doing five. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and maybe some of your guys' tips uh, for Rakan. Maybe some cool, innovative builds because he can be uh, quite flexible when it comes to that. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into tip number one. All right, and jumping into tip number one, I'm gonna go over two small reticule tips that can help you land more of your abilities. First up, we are gonna go over the Gleaming Quill and how it is a rather fat missile when you are shooting it, because as you can see here, it definitely looks like you should be missing the target right here when you're throwing out your Q, but it does hit, so it does latch on a little bit to targets. How you can look to effectively use that is when there are minions on the outside, but he is behind the minions, you will be able to throw out that Q and still snag the side of the target. This is going to be extremely important in the early laning phase when the sustain really comes at a premium and it might allow your ADC to get off a few more CS, stay around in lane a little bit longer if you are able to hit more of those heals. Second, when you are throwing out this grand entrance, if you didn't know, if you're throwing out it out from max range, there's a bit of a delay. And if you're throwing it from just right in front of someone, it is a lot quicker. So how you want to look to use this a little bit of delay is you want to lead the target in their most likely way of escaping. So when you are in this area and you are chasing them down, particularly in lower elos, their first step is going to be backwards towards the safety of their turret. So you want to position the W at about right there now the trick is to not overlead the target and just allow them to step forward or just move to the right or the left so always make sure that they're going to have to take a step generally if you look at this w reticule right here you can see the three sections you want to put them a little bit in the uh, middle of the section and that is going to be a rather strong place to throw the w and you're going to be able to hit more obviously throwing your skill shots from fog of war is going to be better just because it's going to be a little bit harder for them to read especially if there are a bunch of minions that are around them maybe clouding up maybe you have an adc that is throwing out a bunch of abilities and it's not going to be as readable this w that comes out of your grand entrance you are going to have a higher chance of hitting that um, skill shot so that will wrap up tip number one for recon all right, and jumping into tip number two, when you are playing Rakan, it is extremely important that you take advantage of the downtime that you have while you are dashing around in the team fights for a couple of different reasons. First of all, Rakan is a rather squishy champion. He doesn't have the tankiness of something like maybe a uh, Braum or a Thresh. And second of all, the late game and mid game team fights are going to go by extremely quickly because of just how the current meta is. There is a lot of damage being thrown around so your ability to get out as many abilities and items and um, just overall inputs into the game is going to be rather important. So if you didn't know, while you're e-dashing, you can put in your W input and making sure that you can get a shield on the target as well as getting off that W as well as you can add an item. So I'm going to be inputting both my grand entrance and my redemption in this one e duration dash so i get off all of those and if you didn't know there's no global cooldown that is on uh in league of legends similar to something like a uh, a world of warcraft game had so keep this in mind and just making sure that you are getting really really smooth combos you're getting out everything you want in a distinct manner not just spamming all your buttons but getting into a really nice rhythm where you're able to push out a lot of active on uses and a lot of abilities in a certain situations that are calling for it and that will wrap up tip number two for recon all right and let's jump into tip number three this one's going to be pretty quick and it's just a good understanding of how cc works and how it revolves around flashes when you are playing recon so it is extremely easy for enemies to flash away as all lower elo players do they always look to use their flash 
um, reactively as opposed to proactively. So they are going to be looking and waiting for the skill shot to come out and they're going to flash away. It's going to be rather easy when you are just throwing out maybe a max range um, W or even maybe E into an ally and then doing a W. This is going to be pretty easy to flash away from. But However, if you have a R up and then you flash in and you charm into the knockup, it is going to be a lot harder for them to react. So the flash, um, the flash and the R combined with each other is going to really um, take advantage of a couple of different things. First of all, if you have allies that are assassins and can just get on top of the squishy and high priority targets very quickly under this uh, bit of CC duration, it is going to be extremely important. It will be a lot better to make sure that you have the charm straight into the knockup and do not allow any small things, uh, small little gaps that is going to allow them to uh, flash out of your engages. And a really strong engage from a con and getting a bunch of charms and knockups in a team fight is really going to be how you can carry games with this champion. Obviously, doing this from a uh, a flank spot is going to be a bit better just because of the uh, you're going to be uh, more unpredictable. So the more unpredictable you can be um, by using flashes coming from flanks is just going to really feed into the overall effectiveness of Rakan. And that will wrap up this tip. All right, and getting into tip number four, I want to go over some different items and runes. Now these should mix up just dependent on how and what your play style is and what you are playing against. Now, I really like Guardian when I'm playing with something, a hyper carry, a particular champion on my team that is going to need a lot of carrying and then I get maybe a Thien's as in a second or third item slot because that's going to give a lot of single target protection to a particular champion. For example, if you have a champion like a Vayne or a Kog'Ma or just a very high value backline champion, that can really carry late game team fights. These are the types of items you want to get. Maybe like a Corky out of the mid lane. Second, if you are in a lane that is designed as a kill lane, there are quite a few counters to recon. Usually a, a really basic one is just taking Leona with Ignite with a strong early to mid game ADC. Something like a Draven or something like a Varus that can really burst you down. Something like an Aftershock is really going to provide you with a little bit more defensive. Now, next up, the third other rune you can take when you're playing Recon, and that is going to be Unsealed Spellbook. This is going to be for people that are more practiced in the champion and do not need an extra defensive. They just want to have more play playmaking abilities with maybe something like teleporting up to a top lane or a mid lane fight or to uh, a random bot lane to actually gank your own lane or just getting those extra maybe getting a ghost or a heal or an exhaust that can really play an effect so look into unsealed spellbook if you are quite a practice recon um these runes are all of you pretty interchangeable just kind of go off of what you feel is best i really like um overgrowth because it works pretty well with um just making yourself a little bit more tankier when you are playing recon and um second wind is against poke lanes um ultimate hunter i think is a really really important um just overall rune for recon because getting that ultimate um, cooldown reduction is really just going to allow you to be that much more of a playmaker when playing Recon. So items, what you really want to look into when you are playing Recon. If your team really heavily lacks engage, maybe you have a Corky in the mid lane, maybe something like a Jace in the top lane, and something like a Graves in the jungle, how is this gonna, this team fight going to work? It is really coming down to you. You need to pick up items that really help you out. And things like Shirelias are going to really help you get into that position position to close the gap and get those really strong w's and hit as many targets as possible with quickness now when you have an extremely strong carry zeke's convergence i think is just an almost a must buy when you are playing recon i love the slow that it provides the extra damage that is provided to a attacking champion like a kogma or a jinx someone that is going to really just be chucking out a bunch of autos and igniting the frostfire covenant is going to be extremely strong so always keep those in mind when you are looking to play Rakan and build around your particular playstyle and build the right runes for the different game situations. If you have any questions about this, you can hit me up in the comments down below. 
All right, and jumping into the final tip for Recon, one of the most important things, the quickest way to get better at the champion is to practice getting off very strong flanks from unexpected angles. Now, the best way to practice this is by looking um, for as much vision control as possible because this is key when you are looking to flank because there's nothing worse than the entire team just turning on you when you are looking for a clanking, uh, flanking opportunity. So how you augment that is with an oracle lens and with control wards and by looking for the best situations to do these flanks are going to be around objectives up here in the baron down here in the dragon and coming from an angle that is unexpected from the red team's perspective it is very um, common that they might think that the rakan might be coming from here 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 but coming from over here or here or here coming from behind them is really going to allow you to get a really nice flank that is going to be important now being a support recon, you should be watching timers and looking to get vision control for the different objectives before it comes. You don't want to be last second, uh, the dragon just spawned or the baron just spawned and people are looking to contest and you don't have your wards up. You want to have vision control at least 20 or 30 seconds before it happens so you can look for those picks when playing recon. So the perfect example would be control ward right here. You, maybe you swept your way when you were walking through this so they have no idea where you are. The enemy team is all focusing on what these four targets are doing and you just pop over the wall really quickly for a W or you could just um, you could just do an R and then you could flash over and just get a W on how many ever targets you are able to. So um, how you can look to also augment this is by understanding that it is a lot easier to get these kind of picks and these flanks in very uh in the jungle it is going to be uh just a lot more uh, places for the recon to hide in bushes as well as very skinny walls that you can just pop over so looking for picks in these two different areas objectives and jungles is going to be the easiest way it is going to be a little bit harder but it's not undoable when people are just doing an aram so looking for spots like this similar to what a fiddlesticks would do um and just taking advantage of the very uh, minimal kind of fog of war that you can look to do to get behind the enemy and get a very strong flank off. If you have any questions about any of the tips on these videos, I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, that's going to be wrapping up my final tip. And as always, guys, you take it easy.